You suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being. And to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about our longevity products, our True Skin Health products, which are all available at truthtreatments.com, by the way. We've got new products coming out here in the next few days. Truthtreatments.com. If you want to purchase longevity products, you can go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And you can call the Brightside Ben phone team for more information at 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. We are at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls in our, the, bottom of, uh, the bottom of the hour. We had guests the last couple of days. Yesterday, we talked to Quantum Jeff. That was a very enlightening call. I don't know if you're listening, Jeff, but thank you for coming on. Jeff is a listener who has taken on. Talking to Jeff yesterday was kind of like, uh, it was like talking to myself in the mirror. I've never heard anybody just repeat back with, not just repeat, he wasn't just repeating it. I mean, he was getting it. He got everything we were talking about. There's, there's a theory and a concept and a premise to this program and to everything I do. There's a way to take care of our bodies that we are not leveraging. I've been in the skincare business for 35 years, and it's the same thing. I, I've been studying skin and working with skincare and working with the, in the skin business for just as long as I've been doing nutrition. I, I, th- these are parallel tracks of expertise for me, and I've developed them parallel, uh, and, and they're very similar. You know, the skin's an organ of the body. We all know that. So what's true about the inside is true about the outside. And, and what I've discovered is, is we're doing it wrong. We're taking care of our skin the wrong way. We're taking care of our bodies the wrong way. In the world of skin, do you ever wonder why there's so many darn moisturizers around? Do you ever wonder why there's so many skincare companies? You know why there's so many skincare companies and so many moisturizers and so many anti-wrinkle creams and acne creams, blah, 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 blah? Because nothing works. If it worked, we wouldn't have a skincare business. If medicine worked, we wouldn't have a healthcare business. I was listening to the debates yesterday. I knew it was going to happen. And you're going to hear this more and more. Well-meaning people, well-meaning politicians. I I don't know if they're well-meaning. I'm going to assume they're well-meaning. I don't know if that's a good assumption. But let's just say they're well-meaning. Free health care. Pharmaceutical drugs have to be cheaper. we got to have universal health care. So we can have have more universal sickness? Health care is making us sick. We're not healthier because of health care. Are we, ask yourself this. Are we better off from a physical health perspective with all the health care we have? Clearly we're not. Ask yourself this. Are we better, is our skin better off with the moisturizers we have? Clearly not. That's why I revolutionized skin care. That's why I came out with truth treatments. Truth treatments represent a complete paradigm shift in how to take care of your skin. You dose your skin with nutrients. Same thing as taking care of the inside of the body. You dose yourself with nutrition. You use nutrition like you use medicine. Pharmacists study nutrition, by the way. Did you guys know this? Pharmacists study nutrition in pharmacy school. But we don't study nutrition like a doctor studies nutrition. or like Actually, doctors don't even study nutrition. So we don't study nutrition like a nutritionist studies nutrition. Pharmacists don't study nutrition like a dietitian studies nutrition. Pharmacists don't study nutrition like a chiropractor studies nutrition. Pharmacists study nutrition like a pharmacist. We study the dosages of nutrients. We study the therapeutic, the uh, the medicinal and therapeutic value of vitamins and of minerals. So the idea of using nutrients 
for healing the body, you, the idea of using nutrients to prevent disease in the first place, it's a no-brainer to a pharmacist. We understand this. In the world of skincare, I just took those understandings, applied it to skincare. You dose yourself with nutrients. In the world of physical medicine, you, uh, a physical health, you dose yourself with nutrition. We are sicker than ever before. It's not because we don't have enough health care. And free health care isn't going to make a difference. Meme versus mechanism, you guys. A meme does not stand up to scrutiny. A meme does not stand up to uh, examination. A meme is a virus. It, just like they say, when you turn on the lights, the cockroaches scatter. That's what happens to a meme when you turn on the lights. Now, there are good memes out there, but the, these kinds of memes that don't serve us, they're like cockroaches. Turn on the light, they go away. Healthcare for all, more healthcare, pharmaceuticals for everybody, drugs work, drugs help us feel better, drugs make us better. Meme doesn't stand up to scrutiny. Skincare works. I just need a new wrinkle cream. I just need a new moisturizing cream. I'm going to look on Instagram, see where the, new, where the latest new products are. I'm going to go to the department store, see what the new products are. That is a classic example of a bad meme. It doesn't work because we need a, to have a revolution in how we treat the body, how we interact with the body, how we interact with nutrition, how we interact with food in a good, in a positive and negative sense and uh, how we leverage our uh, mental and emotional and spiritual aspects as well. The good news is we just got to turn our attention to it and make correct choices. We just have to live our day-to-day -day lives in a certain way. We just have to make certain decisions, and it's not complicated. And if you're sick, this is the most important news you will ever hear if you're in pain, this is the most important message you'll ever hear. If you want to prevent being sick, or being sick or being in pain, this is the most important message you'll ever hear. If you want to prevent or slow down the aging process, if you want to age gracefully, if you are aging, if you want to age gracefully, we're all aging. We're all going to age. Chronology kicks in. There's nothing. There's no getting around chronology. We live in a time-space universe, and we're, time is, we don't have long, long lives. The trick isn't not to age. The trick is to age gracefully. And if you want to age gracefully, this is the most important message you'll ever hear, is that all we have to do is turn our attention to our bodies, to what we're doing to our bodies on multiple levels, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, and make correct choices. And even if you're way down the disease process, if you're way down the road, if you've, you know, you've been falling apart for years, it may take longer to resolve your health issue, but here's the good news, folks. Resolution can begin immediately, and you have to start somewhere. I get these letters from people that are so heartbreaking with every, not, almost every part of their body falling apart sometimes, and you don't know where to begin, or they don't know where to begin. You got to begin somewhere. You got to begin somewhere. And now... Uh, Thoughts, emotions, these are all very important forces. You've got to understand how to leverage thoughts and emotions. And there are forces that are aligned against us. So we have power of thought and power of emotion, and these are forces, and we can leverage them. But there are other forces that are aligned against us, institutional forces, corporate forces, cultural forces, forces that benefit by keeping us scared. And we don't make good decisions when we're scared. We make desperate decisions when we're scared. These are forces that profit off of keeping us weak. These are forces that profit off of uh, making us not confident. They need us to be not confident. They need us to be scared. And under conditions of fear, we're always going to abdicate to authority. Always. When push comes to shove and you are completely desperate, you will always appeal to authority. And that ain't a good thing, obviously. As is uh, evident by our unbelievably, epically, biblic biblic biblically disastrous health statistics. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. Also, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com if you'd like to purchase Longevity products or sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. You can also call 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470 for more information. Ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $30 fee. You could be in business for yourself and help change the world, make the world a better place through the power of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. A key component of keeping your body healthy, not the only component, but a key component is a good nutritional supplement program. If you've gotten on a nutritional supplement program, if you're dealing with a whole bunch of health challenges, a lot of times people will get on the longevity products, they'll get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, they'll change their lives. And then they'll get on the glucogel caps and Z-Radical and their blood pressure will drop and they'll lose weight, they'll have more energy. And then uh, they'll plateau. They'll just kind of stay the same. They'll get really, when they first get on the program, they get amazing results. And then they just kind of stay the same and their aches and pains or their um, health markers will not change much and they'll sort of level off. If that happens to you, you can rest, rest assured there are other factors that are at play. Mental, emotional, and spiritual factors that are at play. Now, it could be that you're not exactly hitting the sweet spot when it comes to the, your supplements and, the, and your dietary strategies. But usually there are other forces at play and we got to take those into account. Yes, you can get tremendous benefits from nutritional supplementation, from biochemical modification at the physical level. Yes, that's true. But there are so many ways that we can stay healthy and keep ourselves healthy. I was talking to Jeff yesterday, Quantum Jeff. He was just on and on and on. He was just talking about all the different things you could do, and he's absolutely right. There are so many ways we can start the process. We can start the healing process, the recovery process, the, the, the getting back to where the body should be process the building process, the repair process, because all that's built in. It's all part of it. We don't need to be fixed. We need to be fed. We need to be sustained. We need to be nourished. We need to be, uh, we need to be taking care of our own business. And there are definitely forces aligned against us, as I was saying before I went to break. There's institutional forces, corporate forces, cultural forces, and these, all these forces will keep us going. But here's the thing. Check this out. You can only think one thought at a time. I talked about this this morning. I did a radio interview on KSCO in Santa Cruz. And uh, very cool radio station, by the way. Anyway, I said, uh, we were talking about the thought, pro the thought process, and we said we can only think one thought at a time. That is one of the coolest ideas, that you can only think one thought at a time. And that thought can be either a thought that ages you or a thought that, youthifies you, a thought that heals you or a thought that breaks you down. Literally, if you understand the relationship between hormones and thoughts, you know that every time you think a thought, you create a hormone or a, a cascade of hormones, I should say, not a hormone, but you create cascades of hormones, various hormones. And the net effect of these hormones are either anabolic building or catabolic breaking down. And so by controlling the way you think, you can, con you can uh, direct your biochemistry towards building and repair and growth and happiness and longevity. And you can only think one thought at a time and you have a certain amount of choice there. Actually, you have a lot of choice there. Actually, when you think about it, no pun intended, it's all choice. You can only think one thought at a time. Direct your attention towards gratitude. You know what? You can't like force yourself to think, but you can, you can direct your attention. Direct your attention towards something that's great in your life. Direct your attention towards something you're happy about. Now, I'm not saying that you want to be Pollyannish and if stuff's happening in your life that you that isn't good, you got to correct it. Yes. You know, you, you got bills to pay. You got practical things going on. You want to correct all that. But to spend the time, your, your thought time, I love the term pay attention. When you pay attention, it's like money. Your attention is like money. Your attention is like a resource. You pay it. And then, by the way, there are companies that will spend $30 million for a minute of your attention at the Super Bowl or uh, on the Super Bowl. That's what an ad costs. Some, I don't know if it's $30 million, but it's ridiculous how much people, how much advertisers pay for our attention. Our attention is a resource, and it's worth something. So spend your attention very carefully. 
spend your attention on things that will improve your biochemistry. Spend your attention on things that will upregulate your immune system, that will improve your body's healing ability, that will decrease cortisol, that will improve digestion. And speaking of digestion, don't forget to work on digestion and don't forget to work with food and work with nutrition and work with air. Air is so amazing. The single most important tool that you have at your disposal for increasing your longevity from a physical perspective, not talking spiritual, mental, emotional, is oxygen, is respiration. It is so unbelievable what respiration will do. And check this out. There's a major connection between respiration and thoughts. If you are breathing into the top part of your chest, which is what most of us do, even me, unless I'm thinking about it, I am breathing into the top part of my chest. I have to focus on breathing deeply. It's hard to do it when you're talking, by the way. You can breathe a little deeply when you're talking, but it's, it's very difficult to do. But if you can control your, bre your breath, you'll be able to control your thoughts more effectively. If you, go if you breathe correctly, SDR breathing, I call it, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing, so that your belly goes out. And when your belly goes out, by the way, when you're breathing and your belly goes out, you're activating all kinds of happy receptors. When you're breathing so your belly goes out, you can actually feel a little click kind of at the bottom when it goes out enough. You'll feel a little, I don't know how to describe it, but you'll feel, it's almost like a little click, like a little feeling, like a little, it's something that you can, you'll definitely notice when you do it correctly, it makes a little, it's like a, something clicks into place. When you get to that point, you will be not only increasing relaxation chemistry, you're not only be increasing chemistry of satisfaction, but you'll also, if you do it correctly, be using your diaphragm as a, thir as a second heart your diaphragm will actually be supporting the circulation, not just of blood, by the way, of lymph as well. This breathing thing is it's so, so, so important. Even if, you, even if you spend just five minutes a day doing it correctly, get an app called The Breathing Zone, and it'll walk you through it, especially if you're in pain, especially if you are on medication. Do you know that correct breathing will help you eat less food? Because oxygen is required to break down food. Oxygen is required for, uh, uh, for you to get maximum electro the, uh, the maximum electronic benefit out of your hamburger or out of whatever you're eating. So breathing before you eat, so you have plenty of oxygen. There's really some, some really wonderful breathing techniques that you can study. I, I tell people just do plain old SDR breathing, inhaling and exhaling, but you can do something called the breath of fire that will actually increase DMT levels in your bloodstream. It will stimulate the production of DMT out of your pineal gland. Oh, what's DMT? It's pretty amazing stuff. DMT is one of the... It, Descartes thought that, uh, the great mathematician and philosopher, thought that uh, DMT and the pineal gland were the seat of the soul. DMT is a very, very powerful chemical that's associated with spirituality. It's associated with peace of mind. It's associated with very, very fundamental... Uh, with, with the awareness of very, fun, very fundamental constructs that in, of reality in the universe. Is anybody who's, there's a really cool book about DMT called, oh, I forgot what it's called, but it's a guy named Richard Strassman, S-T-R-A-S-S-M-A-N. Breathing correctly can help you stimulate DMT as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. This We are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we will get your calls here momentarily. From the journal Nature Communications, candida causes memory loss and perhaps Alzheimer's. Fungal infections with candida yeast cross the blood-brain barrier. That is a wall that separates the blood from the brain. You know, not everything that's in the blood goes into the brain. You have a little wall between the blood and the brain. So the blood flows through the brain, but... There's something called the blood-brain barrier, which is, in essence, a wall that keeps, the, keeps stuff from leaking out of the blood into the brain, the blood-brain barrier. However, some things do get through the blood-brain barrier, thankfully, because the stuff has to get into the brain, but it's just tightly controlled. Unfortunately, fungal infection, or, uh, fungus, like candida, can cross the blood-brain barrier, and that can be a problem. This is the gut this is a part of the uh, a relationship between the gut and brain health, a very, very fundamental relationship. I've been reading a lot about Alzheimer's lately, a lot about uh, dementia and uh, dental problems, uh, de dementia and uh, candida. Well, let me tell you something here. 
if you have dementia, you basically have arthritis of the brain. It's not, there's nothing special about dementia. There's nothing, nothing special about Parkinson's. Parkinson's is the same thing. I mean, I've been reading now about Parkinson's in the gut. I think I did a, talked about that yesterday or the day before. Parkinson's and Alzheimer's are just arthritis of the brain. They're deterioration of the tissue of the brain. It's not the fault of the amyloid plaques. Yes, there are plaques. Uh, it turns out that candida yeast can cause uh, uh, plaques in the brain. Those plaques are part of the immune system. They're a defensive response. Plaques and fibers occur all over the body. You can get amyloid plaques in your lungs. You can get amyloid plaques in various parts, various tissues in the liver and other, other soft tissues. It's the brain is not unique in the sense that, well, obviously it's unique, but it's not unique in the sense that it deteriorates any differently than your joints do or your connective tissue does or your organs do. The brain deteriorates under the conditions of deficiency, nutritional deficiencies, under conditions of accumulated toxicity, sugar being a toxin, and major relationship between high blood sugar, chronically high blood sugar, or poor sugar control, and dementia and Alzheimer's, and, uh, and uh, inflammation and low oxygen levels. Breathing is one of the most important things you could do for your mental health. Before you we went to break, we were talking about DMT and the pineal gland. When you breathe, you upregulate DMT. Why is that? Because oxygen affects your brain. Oxygen affects your body's emergency system under conditions of low, chronically low oxygen, such as the kind you get from shallow breathing. You can feel, you know, if you just breathe into your belly and feel that little click and then breathe out, in through the nose, out through the nose, by the way, there's, there's relaxation receptors in the top of your nose. It's the most amazing, delicious feeling. It's the most amazing peace of mind feeling. If you have movement disorders, by the way, shaking, like Parkinson's or any movement disorder, palsies, breathing slowly and deeply will give you almost instant results, at least in terms of mitigating the symptomology and maybe even eliminating the symptomology. Stresses, sleep, Alzheimer's and dementia, digestion, all of these, uh, uh, athletic performance, all of these parts of being alive, blood pressure, are all improved. They're, the facility uh, with which they operate is all of them are improved. Better performance, lower blood pressure, better digestion, better thinking. All of it is improved by SDR breathing and oxygenation. And once again, you don't need a doctor or a drug to oxygen, oxygenate your body and to blow off carbon dioxide. They're both important. Inhale and exhale. Especially, by the way, if you're constipated. Next time you're constipated and you're trying to have a bowel movement, try using your respiratory system as a pump. Picture a pump, because as you're, as you're inhaling and exhaling correctly, when you're trying to have a bowel movement, if you can't, it acts like a peristaltic pump. You're actually pumping the intestine through this movement. Your entire body is pumping when you breathe correctly. Do you get that? That is so amazing. All the muscles, all the circulation, the lymph and the blood, the heart, everything is pumping like a pump. Your body becomes a massive pumping system when we breathe correctly. And you can really observe it if you're constipated. Try it. Check it out. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's hit the phones. Go to Texas and say good morning to Marie. What's up, Marie? Yes. Welcome to the Bright Side. Uh, hi. I was calling because I just went, I was having a problem and I went to go get a biopsy. And they told me that I was precancerous and they want to give me a hysterectomy. And I'd like to know what my options are. Well, how old are you? How old am I? I'm 60. I'll be 61. I would highly advise against it unless you have cancer in there. Precancer is not cancer. That means things are growing incorrectly. That, yeah. that means things are growing. They're not growing right. Did you have menstrual problems when you were, when you were getting, having your period? Did you have a history of menstru menstrual uh, issues? No, but on Father's Day, that's when I started. I went through the change and 11 years ago, and on Father's Day, I was bleeding, and that's where I went to go get checked. Yeah, yeah your hormones are messed up. You've got to have other symptoms. You're not going to be able to approach it right at the level of the reproductive system, but you can approach it from other symptoms. You've got to have digestive issues, especially around fats. Yeah. Do you have your gallbladder? Uh, yeah, I, I've had digestive issues. I have, have to. After reflux, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all connected. All connected. You've got to get to the bottom of it. Usually it involves the fatty system, and that means fat processing, fat digestion. Uh, organs. I'll tell you the organs that are involved, the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder, 
the stomach probably too, but kind of, you're going to have to see what kind of, you got to do a couple things. Okay. Number one, you want to start eliminating problem foods. The acid reflux will tell you when you're having a problem because what you're eating is, is the cause of the reflux. So notice what foods trigger the reflux, what types of foods. Typically it's going to be sweets and flours. Okay. Yeah. That's, the, that's typically what it is. Uh, if I were you, I'd be going ketogenic and I would be going grain free or, or flour free, I'll say. Uh, that's right off the bat, but you want to kind of be, in addition to that, you want to kind of find what your specific battles are, what specific foods you're having an issue with. Then you want to start helping your body process those fats, uh, probiotics, get on uh, the nightly essence probiotics, um, get on, uh, from, start eating fermented foods, fermented veggies, use your ultimate enzymes with all meals. I would try a little apple cider vinegar with the ultimate enzymes. Um, so you, you want to focus on digestive health. And then thirdly, you want to make sure you're getting your fatty nutrients because it's very likely, you know, it's very likely you're not getting enough anyway, but it's also, even if you were getting them, it's more than likely you wouldn't be absorbing them. So you want to make sure you're taking nutritional supplements to kind of saturate your body with things like vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day, uh, vitamin E, 400 international units a day, vitamin K2, maybe 1,000 micrograms a day. Um, uh, get, make sure you're getting some sun for vitamin D. And then also, uh, whenever you're doing your fatty vitamins, oh, and of course, silly me, ultimate EFAs. I would be doing 9 to 12 of those a day, ultimate EFAs. And when you're taking your ultimate EFAs and your fatty vitamins, do it with food and enzymes. So you do it all together, okay? I would throw in 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate maybe two, milli, two uh, milligrams a day of copper also. Now, I'm not give, I'm, this is not comprehensive. There's a, a lot you have to do. But these are some ideas and places you want, might want to work. Selenium also can be very important, maybe 400 uh, micrograms a day of selenium. Uh, and then uh, make sure that you're getting liquid minerals. And I'd be doing liquid, liquid minerals all day. And it's going to be a work in progress. But having your organs taken out is setting you up for a miserable next 25 or 30 years if you haven't taken out at the age of 60, unless there's cancer there. If there's cancer there, right. you know, you got to do what you got to do. But pre-cancer, I would be working every, doing everything I could do like I just told you. Hang on, Marie, we got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Marie in Texas. Uh, Marie, you there? Yes. Up here. Hi, Marie. So, yeah. Uh, I have a question, though. If I did everything re- you tell me, how long would it take before I... You should start to notice results. Yeah. You, should, you should start to notice that you're getting results within days. I'm not, I don't know how far along you are, so I can't tell you how long, how long it'll take for everything to reverse. But you should start to notice that your symptomology, now you must, have, you must feel lousy, correct? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. So what you're going to start to notice is energy. You're going to start to notice you're feeling better. This is what you're looking for. It's very, very important. Our, our um, metric needs to be how we feel. And we have to tune in with our energy levels. We have to tune in with, our, uh, with uh, uh, how, much mo- how effective we are in our day-to-day lives, how uh, we can do things without pain and move our bodies. And you know, just living in a body <clears throat> should become more, effect- more joyful, more energetic, and more effective over time. That should take just a matter of days. Once you start a supplement program, once you start filtering, uh, controlling for the foods you're having problems with, working on the digestive system, don't forget your deep breathing. You know what, Murray? Everything we talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hysterectomy is targeted at the reproductive system, but you have to do everything that we talk about on this program, and you should start to notice more energy levels within, da- uh, how would within I know, days. I know, though, I don't have cancer. That's what they're, they're thinking, take everything out and then check. I know they are, because yeah. you, they don't have to live in their bodies. They're, they're just, yeah. they, you have to live in your, in your now carved up body. They don't have right. to. They don't have to feel the pain that you'll have every day. They don't have to deal with the adhesions and the scar tissue that you're going to deal with every day. They don't have to deal with the hormonal changes and the, the, the hormonal disaster that you're going to be dealing with. They'll say, oh, we'll just give you a little drugs and it'll replace your hormones. Baloney. You don't think your, your reproductive system is still making hormones? Of course it is. No, I, I'm not buying it. But, of course, just, you, know, you have to make your own decisions. My concern is that I don't, you know, make the wrong thing and then, you know. You know what? Cancer. You know what? If you, have everything taken, if you have everything taken out, it ain't coming back in. All right? That could be the wrong thing, too. 
Either way, it could be the wrong thing. In my, I'm just giving you my opinion. Now, this is obviously right. your decision to make. In my opinion, I'd be doing everything I could do, everything I could do. And I get, just gave you eight or nine things, but if you listen to the archives and listen to this program, you get a hundred things you could do. And I'm not, in, I'm not marginalizing spiritual, mental, emotional either. Those are all important. But from a physical perspective, I just gave you eight things you could do from getting on probiotics to make sure you're getting your fatty vitamins to making sure that you're controlling for digestive issues and eliminating problems, food, problem foods. That's just me. And that's why I do this program to offer options. You know, you call this program, but there's a million, there's millions of people that didn't call this program. They're having their organs, organs taken out today. Right. You know, so I'm just telling you my opinion. And at the end of the day, you've got to make your own decision on that. But personally, I would be doing everything I could do uh, to avoid having, having anything taken out. There's no spares in there, Marie. There's right. no spares in there. Yes, if you have cancer, obviously that's a problem. They didn't say cancer. They said pre-cancer, and pre-cancer is a very a large window to be pre-cancer. Some, yeah. A little growth, some excess growth, which is a sign of major duress, uh, that could be pre-cancer. That, that could be what they're calling pre-cancer. Now, it's not a good thing. You want to correct it, but that's, I don't know that that's necessarily a reason to have everything taken out. Uh, but again, you have to make your own opinion, and God bless you. I, I know that's got to be a scary and frustrating Thank situation. You. Okay, take care, Marie. All right. Thank all right, and I, you know, you can. It's awful. It's an awful thing. We live our lives a certain way. Then we become fifty or sixty, and we get pre-cancer, and then it's so terrible. It's so terrible. It's heartbreaking. But we can do something about it, and don't become. Uh, don't abdicate responsibility to authorities because guess what? They don't know. The doctor who's saying take it out is saying just in case. He doesn't have to live in Marie's body. He doesn't have to deal with all of the, the repercussions of having a major surgery and having your organs taken out. You think you're the same person after that? It, it really is a, a heartbreaking situation. If you do have all your organs and you are healthy now and you're young, Please, please make sure you take care of yourself now. All right, Pam in Michigan. Good morning. What's going on, my friend Pam? Hey, Ben. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. But I have a, um, well, actually, I want to say a couple of things. Um, I concur with your comment about the world bullies and the unjust sharks out there instilling the people with fear. It's terrible. It's horrible, unnerving, and it's just wrong. And I guess that's, you know, that's just why they just slowly drip on us, right, with that slushy shake. <laughs> But um, so my question is about butter. As um, you know, my parents, they didn't want to buy anything that was unnecessary. You know, we farmed and, you know, they didn't go out and buy suntan lotion. We were out all the time. So my thought process back then was, well, I'm going to use the next best thing. And I would lay out and I'd put butter on myself. So am I a bad person for that? Because um, now what I was told also is that I had third stage kidney disease back in the 90s, okay? And so this last doctor that I saw, um, she said she wanted to take that right out of my history, right out of my records that I ever even had it. But one little thing that happened last month was Friday, you know, I had um, some wild-caught salmon, and the next Friday I had the wild-caught salmon. That was the only different thing. And the next day I was vomiting, but I couldn't vomit. I, I couldn't, you know. Nothing was coming out, up or down or anything. The whole day, my body shut down. So, I wonder how you feel about that. Um, I don't necessarily know how that would be related, if it would be related, but you had, you had some other medical issues going on, no? Yeah, well, the third stage kidney disease, what I looked up in Dr. Wallach's book on page um, 358, and it says that I should avoid, um, you know, like, fish oil. I should avoid sun tanning. And so those are the things that, you know, I thrive on. You know, I... I I'm, not necess I, I'm not necessarily... I don't know if I would be buying that. You know, this, how, do you, how long are you out there? In the sun, I'm out all day in the sun when I'm out. Is it sunny out there in Michigan? <laughs> well, for three days we had a grand slam. But yeah, um... You know, I, I don't know. Uh, that doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't sound right. What, tell me your symptoms one more time. Well, my symptoms right now is just, you know, I'm just wondering about the third stage kidney disease. Should we shy away from the sun and no. also? No. Okay. 
No, vitamin D is actually processed in the kidney. It's actually made in the kidney. Uh, and if you have kidney disease, you can be dealing with, with vitamin D deficiency issues, and vitamin D, D deficient, deficiency issues can cause kidney disease. Or can, I don't want to say cause, can be linked to, to kidney disease. There's a major relationship between the kidney and vitamin D. Let's say that. Okay? So, mm -hmm. no, I, I'm not, I don't know. You said, Dr. This is in Doc's book? This is the Dead Doctors Don't Lie, page 358. Yeah. I, you know, I can't, you'll have to, I, I, that's not my take on it, and unless I'm missing something there. So you're saying that, you're saying that he put in the book there, if you have kidney disease, you want to stay out of the sun? Um, well, it says excess vitamin D, sun tanning, fish oil, and supplementation concurrently with... Um, I, think he, I think the logic is vitamin D is processed in the, by the kidney, but, but, but at the same time, if you have kidney disease, you're going to have vitamin, T, vitamin D deficiencies can be related to kidney disease. So I don't know. I'm not buying that. That, uh, you have to ask Doc on that, that's, okay, unless I misunderstand him. What's and, that? And I, that's why I'd like to get, you know, other people's opinions and research and, and you know, flip it off this one and that one. I don't want to just, like you said the other day, you know, I don't want to just buy everything that people are saying on the TV or the radio or, you know, guy in the grocery store, right? You just want to, I think I'm going to think about that. You know, I'm going to research it myself. Thank you very much. You Thank know? you, Pam. Have a good day. Yep. All right. Let's see. Uh, we're going to try and get one more call in here. Shauna in Idaho. What's going on, Shauna? Ben, my daughter all of a sudden had her foot start hurting, and she can't walk on everything. She went and got an emergency. They said there's nothing they can see. Maybe a limb pole, a tissue of the muscle, but it's just so much pain. She's finally taking medication for the pain relief. Shawna, you're cutting out. I'm so sorry. Can you say that again? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, my daughter's left foot just all of a sudden started hurting on her right foot, and she uh -huh. hasn't done anything, and she can't walk on it now. She went into the emergency room at late night. They took an x-ray, didn't see anything broke, but it's on the outside of her ankle, outside of the leg. But they're think thinking it might be a limb pull, a fatty tissue under the muscle. But uh, she, she has some kind of, she has something in the lymph is what you're saying? I'm, I'm just having a hard time hearing you. I'm so sorry. You're saying she has something in her lymph node? Um, they, they're not for sure. They said they took Okay, so let's real quick. I only got about 30, 40 seconds here. Yeah. The lymph is your body's circulation for waste. Right. In addition to other things. When nodes get clogged, that usually means that the lymph is, is not moving correctly or there is toxicity in there. The, there's a major right. connection between the digestive system and the lymph. In fact, at the level of the intestine, all kinds of stuff goes into the lymph. So, once again, focus on foods, especially fatty foods, but all foods and eliminating problem foods work on the digestive system that's all you know what you guys that's always the first place to do it sean sean i gotta go only got 10 seconds okay. thanks for your call appreciate it and thanks for listening folks i'm pharmacist ben have a wonderful beautiful awesome spectacular day we'll talk to y'all later bye for now